Let's talk about the properties panel, this one on the right side here. And of course, this is where you set up the properties, the configurations of whatever you have selected. Now, this is contextual. So depending on what you have selected will be the options that you see over here. And there's two main things that you'll have selected. Either you'll have the page selected, and you can either do that by just clicking out on the canvas or clicking on the root widget, and then you'll see all the options for configuring a page or any widget. And of course, you'll see all the different options for the widget that you have selected. Now, we'll go into more detail on page properties and widget properties in those individual videos, but I wanna give you a high level overview of these things. So let's start out with the page properties. And starting from the top, you have page parameters. And page parameters is what you set up when you want to pass data between pages. So for instance, maybe you have a list of products or list of users. And when you click on that product, you go into a page that shows you the specific data about that product. Well, you need to pass that information between the page. Maybe that product ID, maybe the name of it. It depends on how your project and your backend is set up, but you're going to be passing information, and you do that by page parameters. Secondly, you have route settings. This has to do with your navigation, and this is used for whether you're shipping on a native iOS and Android app or on the web. This will be how you configure those links. Next, you'll have options for duplicating or deleting and giving a name to your page. Next, you'll have these tabs, and these are universal across both page properties and widget properties. And when you click through these, you'll be given the different options. So this first one right here is just your standard page properties. This is where you'll spend a bunch of your time. Next, you have your actions. This is where you define the logic of your application. That is things like when you click on a button, what do you want it to do? To make backend calls, to trigger animations, to update local state variables, to update your backend, things like that. You'll handle all of your logic here. Next, you've got backend queries. This is where you bind whatever you have selected to a call to a backend service, like your database or an API. I call. Now note, this isn't where you set this up, this is where you actually bind it. So if you want to set up, for instance, an API call, you come over here into this tab to set those up, or your Firebase, which goes here, and there's some settings in here as well. But once you have those set up, this is where you attach those calls, where you tell your app, this is where I want you to go get the data. But you set up the connections over here. Okay, next, You've got your animations tab. Now, you don't have animations on your page. That's why we don't see it here. And then finally, we've got state management. Now, in Flutterflow, there are three different types of state variables. One's for your whole app, which you create here. One's for components and variables for on pages. And that's where you define these here. The other option that you'll see here is authentication. And you'll see that if you have both authentication set up and you're deploying to web. And it's the option to indicate whether this page requires authentication to view. Okay, let's go to the properties for widgets. So if I just click on a widget right here, you can see that we have a lot of similar things, but some different. So let's take a look at here. Similar as before, you can name your widget. And you want to be naming your widgets because it's going to be helpful to search and find them over here and to immediately see what they do. It's also helpful when you get into your logic and you start binding your widgets to actions, it'll be easier to pick out the widgets if they have semantic names. Next over here, we've got three options that relate to your design system. All three of these will create something from the widget that is reusable. And if we start over here, this is to save it as a theme widget. That is, you're saving the style to be reused across different widgets. That is, if I save this as a theme widget right here, I could then apply it in this option right here. Next, you could save whatever you have selected as a component so that you can use it in any page, and you can access those whenever you have an add widget dialog in here. 
And finally, you have templates. You can think about templates as components that you can use across projects. So if you're building multiple apps and you have a widget or multiple widgets that you think you're going to want to use in other projects, you can save them here. And once again, to access those, whenever you open add widget dialog box, you can access them here. Next, as a general rule, you'll have two large other sections. That is conditional visibility, responsive visibility, padding and alignment. And these are common across most of your widgets. And then when you scroll down, you'll have the properties specific to that widget. So our text widget has different properties from our container widget. But you can see our container widget here still has these three ones, conditional visibility, responsive visibility, padding and alignment. The conditional visibility has to do with when you want to show and hide this widget under what conditions. So if you turn it on, you would set up a condition. Responsive visibility has to do with showing and hiding stuff depending on what device they're on and padding and alignment, which has to do with common layout properties. Now, one other common feature you're going to see is this little icon right here. This is probably the most common symbol you're going to see across all widgets. And this is the set from variable icon. And what this indicates is that this value, so here, this width, you can set it right here, you can hard code it in here, or you can bind it to another value. And when you click on that icon, you're given this dialog box, and you'll spend a lot of time in this dialog, because a lot of your design and development will be properly binding values so that they're dynamic. So for instance, if you have a product page, the product value will not be hard coded in, but will probably come from your database where you're storing that product information. And not only that, but maybe you want to make some other transformation to that value. Maybe you want to change the formatting or want to add tax to it. You would do all this through this set from variable options. Okay, that's all these properties. All of these other options are the same, except for this last one right here that we haven't seen. And that's the documentation and accessibility and semantic labels. The documentation is to make notes for yourself or your team about this widget. This is just helpful for organization to keep track of what you're doing, especially when you're on a team. Down here, if you're shipping to web, you can add a description of what that widget is. And this is for both accessibility for screen readers, as well as for SEO, so search engines can scrape and understand your website. The last other option that you're gonna see in here is for any widget that can take multiple children, you're going to see this icon right here, which is generate dynamic children. So either when you make an API call or maybe you have a local state array variable with a bunch of items, you can generate children from those lists. So maybe your API returns an array of objects or just an array and you want to have a card or text list based on those items. That's where you set those up here. And that's the properties panel in Flutterflow.